update of where we're at. We're getting ready, as everybody knows, to head back to the session. Uh, we got a couple big things on the agenda, and the biggest of all is auto no fault insurance reform. We have got to do something with our auto no fault. Um, our costs continue to escalate and grow, and with no end in sight. So we we need to look at. Um, addressing the, the fraud part and the folks that are out there driving on the roads that have no insurance or no valid insurance. So we've got to look at the big picture of what we can do so we can pass those savings down to us without really doing any harm to the coverage that we carry. So auto no fault will be something I hope we can get up and get off the floor. I've got a bill out there now that's been in committee and out of committee and thought we had it ready to go and we can't get enough support on it so it's going to be a challenge I will tell everybody it is not an easy subject but it is something that we've got to work on because we cannot continue to to grow a deficit and um, our catastrophic fund is at 19.4 billion and right now it's projected that that's not enough to carry the people that are currently on it so that's a concern of how we fund that and continue to keep that coverage and keep it right. So we've got to, we've got to figure out how we work that. And real brief, a lot of it is what we call fraud or unassigned claims. Um, currently under our no fault, if somebody's out there with no insurance, if your vehicle strikes their vehicle and there's passengers in that, the driver's not covered, but if they have passengers, your insurance company has to cover all those folks for as long as it takes to get them healthy. So that's that's a concern. Don't uh, they go back to their insurance first? They, they don't have, have insurance. insurance. Like the passengers? Not <coughs> under our no fault situation. Under our no fault it, it goes to the driver of the other vehicle. That's money, I have a problem with that. And, and it's going to be tough because there's, I will tell you, there's many, many people inside um, the House of Representatives that feel that they have a right to be able to drive out there even if they don't have insurance. And I think that's right. You're breaking the law. You're breaking the law. So it's going to be a battle. I know that I've been working with a couple uh, folks down in the southeast section to propose some legislation. We'll see where we get here out of the gate, but it's got to be fixed. We also know, and just so everybody knows, that we did put together a mental health task force that is working on um, assessing our, our mental health system that I feel is, and I think we all feel that it's broken right now. We're, we're lacking facilities. Uh, we know that. We also know that we're our doctors are aging out, new ones aren't coming in because of the situation, so we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, so that that is being addressed right now, and they'll come to us with a report, and then we've got to figure out how we're going to fix it because it's got to get addressed. And then lastly, we all know that we have a major opiate problem. It's not going to go away. We did pass some, some general opiate uh, bills um, late last term. They're through, they've been signed, they've been passed that helps some of the pharmacists, doctors, things like that. But we know that we've got to go further because of the problem. And, and coupled with that is uh, you know, a situation that nobody really wants to address. But under this opiate bills that we pass, the pharmacist or somebody that's there, if they start, they can go to and access the site without repercussions and find out if somebody if somebody's all of a sudden is in heart and here's this doctor gave a prescription and they go in and find out that this person had another prescription just filled somewhere else they actually in the past they couldn't do that they can actually do that now and if they have to they can call the police and have that person and I, I think we've got to stop it because there's a lot of but those, that's one piece of many. There was 11 bills in that process. They all passed um, really without much resistance because it's a problem, we know it. So those are really what the hot button 
items are that we've got to address. So with that, I'll open it up to questions and I'll try to answer the best I can. Yes, sir. House Bill 4691, help me out again. This is a child custody bill? Yes, sir. Yes, they're in committee from what I understand. I have, that is the parental rights one, yep. is that right? Yeah, yes. I want to read you a letter that my daughter wrote okay. to um, Senator Meekoff. Okay. She's in a custody battle right now. Okay. And, um, and I'd like to say before I even read the letter, I'm not, I understand the reason for the talk about the 50-50. I, I get that. But I think it's um, derelict of the House and Senate if they pass this um, to not recognize that the judge needs to hear each individual case and not, you know, carte blanche say this, it's a one size fits all. Um, I'll read my daughter's letter and then I'll get into my explanation. Senator uh, Mikoff, I would like to express my opposition to House Bill number 4691 in its current form, also known as the Michigan Shared Parenting Act. I have no issue with joint custody. It's a great thing when two parents are focused on their children. However, this bill is not about kids. It's about parents. Our current law focuses on the best interests of the children. It's not perfect, but to throw out 40 years of law makes no sense at all. This proposed bill is confusing and will only increase litigation, which is costly and negative for children. I have a five-year-old daughter, and I'm currently going through a custody case. I have supported our daughter solely for the past two years. If this bill is passed, her father will automatically get equal custody. It will enable him to continue working only two to three days a week, because he chooses to, and force me to pay for his decision not to work, ultimately affecting my ability to support my child in the best possible way. Many custody cases are unique and complex and require thoughtful deliberation. This bill will take away the ability for the judges to make decisions based on all of the known facts. If this bill passes in the House, I urge you to vote no in the Senate. That was because it was sent to Senator Meekoff. Um, State Representative uh, Vanderwall, um, for two and a half years, my daughter has been supporting our grandchild. The reason that she moved out of the house that she was in with her high school sweetheart, she's 32 years old, she has a very good job, she works down in uh, uh, Muskegon. Uh, she's paid for everything. Um, recently, she had to put a PPO out on this guy because he was stalking her. Um, and I won't even get into all the details of that. Uh, at one point, this, this individual got uh, into a car wreck, and this is the kind of thinking he has. He, he duct taped a headlight to his, on his car and couldn't understand why my daughter wouldn't let our granddaughter in the car until it was fixed. Um, he's a known substance abuser, he doesn't work. He lives in filth and squalor, and yet, if this bill passes, he will get 50% custody. And because he doesn't work, and my daughter makes considerably more money, um, it's been determined by the front of the court so far, and they're going through this, that she is responsible for 78% of the child's upbringing uh, financially. And now she, she's been paying 100% up to this point, and she's happy with that. This and man- barely making it with her expenses. And barely making it at all. This man has a, sleep problem where he cannot wake up and she's given him equal visitation three days a week uh, every other weekend and two days a week and every other weekend the only thing she's denied him is overnights because he cannot wake up you can shake him you can slap him, you can make loud noises short of throwing cold water at him, he doesn't get up if my five-year-old granddaughter goes downstairs in his home because there's only one bathroom and falls down those stairs which is it's a very steep stairway he'll never hear her cries there's a fire, he wouldn't hear the fire. He would never hear the fire. It'd be like leaving her home alone. Yeah, it's, it'd be like leaving. So if this bill passes, <clears> and I can't, and this is just my daughter, and I I am totally, you know, the parents get along, and he's got a good job, she's got a good job, they're responsible parents, and I totally agree with it. But it can't be just a carpet bomb. The dad gets 50%, the mom gets 50%, and if the dad decides to be a stay-at-home dad and play video games all day and work a couple days a week, uh, putting in windows, that shouldn't cut it for him getting paid by my daughter who's worked her butt off for, you know, for two and a half years since they've been separated. And then the whole time they were eating together. So I, I've i read through this bill. I, I'm not a lawyer. I don't understand it. But I just, 
Well, I'll give you my two cents. I heard you. Uh, I, I'll give you my two cents on the bill. And I, I've had both sides come to me and talk to me just like you talk. I've got some grave concerns with the bill. I feel, number one, it's extremely important that the judge needs to make the decision on how much custody is given to either one. And part of the reason why it was there, and I haven't talked to the individual because it was dropped in June, um, but I will as soon as we get back because it'll go to committee and I know he's been working it very hard, but my concern is, is that just normally they would grant most of the custody for the, the mom versus the dad. And, but it, the judge needs to be, there's nothing that's proven or factual against the parent. They should have shared custody. In a situation that we've got proof, you know those things, that all needs to be taken in place. And if it needs to be supervised, it needs to be supervised. I have a situation with another constituent in Mason County that is very similar to what you're saying. And the judge did rule in, in favor of the mom to have custody and only supervise for the father. That's the way it needs to be. And if it's vice versa, that the father proves to be the, the parent of sound means, and then it needs to be the father and the mother needs, it, it needs to be looked at by the front. I'm not excited about our front of the court. We've got many flaws in that system that need to be addressed the same way as anything else. So I will tell you, I've got a, a bunch of concerns with that bill. I feel where you're coming from as that bill sits today. Um, I can't support that bill. What do you think that your, your colleagues will say about this bill? I don't think that it's personally, I'm just, and I haven't been around to talk to enough of them. I don't feel that, that it's got the support to move on, but you know, I need to, I can't say until we get in there, but I can tell you that I've got some really big concerns with it. What can we do as citizens to eat? Well, you, right, right. I think it's extremely important that you, you know where I sit, and I appreciate you come in. I, you need to contact Senator Boer, yes. make sure that you push your concerns there. Any type of, I will tell you, the blanket emails that we get, be careful to sign on to blanket emails because blanket emails become one of those things you look at them and once you hit them once, you can be a very good, I read them one time and then they just, you know what I'm saying. Right. But if you if you send one that's just you to the, the members, that's extremely important. Try not to sign on the blank at once. Okay. They, it takes a lot Good more. Place, I was going to send out a letter to all my friends and relatives yep. to send this if to they, If they copy and paste it and just put their name on it and they're not 100 people on it, but it gets a lot more play when it's concerned and you can explain where you're from. Those are the things that we look because it, it helps. Once you read them and you see that this is the same one, you, you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. But if you see that it's something different, it's written a little bit different, um, people read through them and we respond back. So understand where we're at. That's the key to that right now is make sure you get your voice heard. Okay. You know where I stand. Um, and I understand, um, you know, it's a, you know, I've got a dad in another district that's basically experiencing what your daughter's experiencing and he's not being looked at because he's the dad. And I that's the, and I, you know, and that's where my issue is with a friend of the court because they need to look at the whole picture and make sure that we're addressing it for the individual, not the old standard or whatever. It's got to be each issue looked at and it gets tough. Yeah, this, this individual, I mean, he'll get overnights probably. This, this thing's going to court September 22nd. He'll probably get every other, as it sits now, the front of the court always already said he'll probably get every other weekend overnights, which terrifies my daughter. Mm -hmm. Understandable. Uh, absolutely terrifies her. And that's just, that's where the court system is built in. This is the way it's going to be. You're going to get it. And he shouldn't even have that. She doesn't mind him seeing it. She's not trying to keep the daughter. Her daughter away from him. She's just trying to keep her, her daughter safe, and this guy—it's not—it's absolutely not a safe environment. And nope. 
Um, Can you take photo? I mean, your daughter take photos? You said he lives in squalor, and you said the steps are really steep. I mean, can she have photos of those? So she she has when they go. She has photos of him not waking up. She has photos of a lot of things in the house from when she was there. But uh, he has smoke detectors. Oh, yeah, I'll put those in. Yes. <laughs> You know, and, yeah, it, and going back to your insurance thing, I know this guy's running around about insurance. Yeah, yeah, I know positively. It is, you know, uh, and when you get your water cut off and your heat cut off and your electricity cut off, your car insurance is the last thing you worry about. Right. You know, so. Uh, well, that's not a healthy environment no. for a child to be in. But this so. child's going to be in it if this still passes. Yeah. Appreciate your comments on that. Mm -hmm. What else can I answer? Yes, sir. You were talking about people sending you emails. I know it's not you, but many years ago, 20, I sent our representative in Washington, D.C., a handwritten letter that I didn't like her stance on gun control. You know, I think I took one issue, and I got a very nice letter. Thank you for your support. We always appreciate the people in northern Michigan. She didn't read my letter. And obviously, if she did, she didn't get the point. I was, I said, no, I oppose what you're proposing. You know, take guns away from law-abiding citizens and things like that. And uh, but I, I know personally that you, you or somebody reads my letters because I get a response. We, we, will try to either address it by phone or we'll dig up some documentation, make sure we send it back to somebody. Now, I'm not going to tell you that something doesn't slip through the cracks because, it, mm -hmm. honestly, you you wouldn't believe how much comes in. And sometimes you put it on there and you make a call and you get busy and all of a sudden you go, oh my gosh, you know, my reminder and two weeks mm -hmm. later did I, did I get it. But it's important to us that we do. We try hard at that. I'm not going to say that we haven't dropped the ball because then it would be a, a fit. But I think most of the time we're... We're on top of that. What else is out there? Yes? Um, I would like to hear more about the mental health task force. What does it mean? Are you just assuming information or are you... Uh, we know that right now we got to figure out a way to get new doctors into the system. We need more beds into the system. And they're basically putting this task force together to see some estimated costs. We think we have very few facilities on the west side of the state. We know we lost Hadley, so we that's gone. We know right now, an example is Manistee County. I talked to a sheriff's deputy the other day. If somebody comes in that has a suicide issue, it's two officers in a vehicle. They have to bring them to where they've got to go. The officer says they have to bring somebody to Escanaba. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's, no, that's a day up, overnight, and a day back, and then you got to go back and get them. So there's a lot of things that we've got to do to try to reduce our costs. And unfortunately, because of the lack, what we call lack of beds, is that if we had a facility over, say, Midland, and they're full, then we've got to look for wherever there's a bed available. And it's, it's so we've got a lot of work to do to figure out how we can bring that system back, bring personnel, because we're losing our physicians in there. Also, the liability on a physician, if he deems that somebody is mentally ill and he puts it on the record, that never disappears, and you can't get it off. And that so doctors are very hesitant in lines of putting that tag. So right now it's basically trying to rip that back down to the core, see what we got to do to rebuild that system because it's a growing problem. Um, um, what role was the de developmentally de disabled population that received? services from your local mental health agency. Um, I've heard about their um, AB rule. Can you have you looked at that? I have not. 
personally have not looked at that. And that's something that hopefully will come out of that. It's a great question for me to look into. But to be honest with you, I haven't looked into that. I didn't get selected on the task force. Um, other people did, so I know that when I called down the other day, they, I know that they were having a big meeting on, what day was it I called? Tuesday, I believe. Or Wednesday, I can't, my week's kind of, no, it wouldn't have been yesterday, so it was the day before Tuesday. I know that they had a big meeting, um, and they had the hospital associations, they had the state police, so mental health uh, folks that were there from our local, not ours here, but that uh, govern them. So they are looking at all of that. Are they, are they talking with consumers? I believe that they are talking with people that are there. I can't answer that question 100%. Oh, sorry. I just, you know. Yeah. No, those are good questions, and I, I can't answer that until we get an update when we go back next week. Um, those will be questions that I ask for you. Thank you. Yes, sir. You're talking about the Veterans Administration. I am getting good service. I go to Cadillac, so I'm going to sag it off. But just yesterday, I had my toenails done at out in Parkdale, no problem getting an appointment. I've been there several times, and I've had physical therapy out in Parkdale, and the Veterans Administration pays for it. It takes a long time to get set up, you know. But once you're set up, it's Veterans' Choice, and in my opinion, it's really working. Well, and you know, I appreciate that, Mike. I'll, I'm going to give you an example of what I had. Um, I had. A veteran called me and I don't know the gentleman but I know he lives in Mason County and he got cancer and basically has been pushed through the ringer that he has to have an appointment to get his medication for the cancer and then they call and cancel it just the day before I mean this gentleman was on the phone with me and it was a the night before a holiday. He was crying. He says, they put me on an island and they just want me to die and go away. This is how he felt. And he says, I've lost several of my friends because of suicide. And he, feel, he says, I feel that I'm starting to get to the thinking that when I thought they were being chickens, that maybe they were the smart ones. Mm -hmm. And so, you know what? I got on a horn that night and got a hold of our VA assistant. And we got him help that night because I was extremely concerned. But this this is the situation that all comes into this and plays into the system. And personally, I'm as I stated before, I feel that a veteran should have a card that allows him to go and get the best service wherever he needs That's to go. What I say. And he doesn't have to go to a VA hospital, wait in line. He could just have the best doctor they, is right there, then that's where he needs to be. So we've got some work to do there. But I appreciate your questions, and I'll dig into that. Yeah, I can never understand why they can't have a certain card just like I have a Blue Cross card. That That's where the bills go. But you can go into any hospital and get, you know, medical yep. treatment. I just well, don't get why that can't happen. That's what I feel. I know that the gentleman that uh, is in charge of that in Lansing. I know him personally and I will say he's, he's, when I can call somebody up on the night before a holiday and say, Jason, I need help. I've got somebody that I can't give him the answers. I've reached out to Bergman and I've reached out to Heisinga and he says he's already been there. We've got a problem and this gentleman dropped what he did and he got on a horn with them and walked him through some things and got him the help he needed. That tells me, you know, and he's on the task force, so quality guy. But you're right, I just, it's, let them specialize in the, if it's special medicine that they're gonna do at the VA, that's fine, but I feel that we've got a lot of opportunities there and we've done a disservice. And Absolutely. So, what else do we got? I have a question. Um, somebody that couldn't be here today asked me okay. a question. 
Um, they're working on wanting to get a liquor license for the Ramsdale, and yes. they thought that you had sponsored some Actually, legislation. Actually, I sponsored a bill. Wanted Matter to know fact, where I just, that's at. I, um, I, just talked to, I just talked about it on my way up here today to get it brought in front of the committee. It's sitting there, the committee chairs looked at it, he's told me that, he says, you know what, he says, what an awesome piece of legislation. And it, he, I said, can we at least get it brought up here this fall? He goes, and he says he's going to, but I will tell you, it is, I don't quite understand, I'm learning some of the, how to massage certain things to get them through, but I believe that we will have it brought up here in September as soon as we go back, and hopefully we'll get that passing through, because it really, it doesn't pertain just to Manistee. Yeah. We yeah. everywhere, even the chair of that committee that it's in front of says this is perfect for my district. Mm -hmm. So, what is it exactly? It's a. It will allow the city of Manistee to buy or possess a liquor license for the Ramsdale Theater for special events that are held inside the theater. Currently, um, they can get some special liquor license, but they're extremely expensive and uh, they're very time related, they're very cumbersome, they're expensive, and you're only limited to a few. Um, but this would only be allowed to be used in the Ramsdale, it wouldn't be able to go anywhere else. So it would be a city, and, and right now they're available, but the population threshold that is out there, nobody in my district can ever meet that population threshold because I believe the number right now is like 12,000. Well, the way that it fits most of our cities don't fit into that, that big of a population. So I reduced the population and opened up a couple of different ways so that they could use it. And there was pretty strict regulations on what it could be used for and, and how they can use the licenses. Um, I have a concern about insurance with mammograms. Mm. People who purchase their own insurance or have it through work, a 3D mammogram is not covered because apparently the government says it's investigational. But the Medicaid program in Michigan pays for it. So how can it be investigational for the government and then let them pay for it for the Medicaid people? Well, Where it's, if you want to pay for it on your own, it's what, 210 bucks, the difference which is a lot of groceries for some people. Yes. So why should they be getting superior care to the, the regular people? Well, I will tell you, I, I'm assuming that uh, I talked to the doctor at uh, Munson or West Shore. Yeah. Okay. Matter of fact, that he was... He was going to try to come. But I actually talked to him on Tuesday, and I actually have a phone call. I've chatted with Blue Cross Blue Shield, and they're actually digging into what's going on. I don't have my notes in front of me to exactly remember what the, the actual term of the procedure is, but I did talk to him about that. I talked to the, the doctor and reached out to me. I called him on Tuesday. We had a nice discussion and I got on the horn, talked to the hospital association and Blue Cross Blue Shield and they said that they would get answers back to me as soon as they could because I told them it's being covered under Medicare and Medicaid and I said it's about a five-year-old uh, system and he says I know that we're trying to get better you know he gave but he said let me investigate and I'll get back to you so I will tell you that's where it's at as of uh, you know, a couple days ago. Yeah, because I spoke with Blue Cross and they said, well, it's investigational. And it's like, well, it's been out there for years and years. Right. And some people feel it's the standard here. <coughs> um, yeah. I, another thing with Medicaid patients, which, I mean, they deserve health care and they deserve good health care. But I grew up here, lived in Ann Arbor for years. If you don't go to your doctor's appointment, they charge you a fee if you didn't call them and tell them you were canceling. The Medicaid, you cannot bill them because the person didn't show up. They reimburse less than the doctor has to pay their workers. 
So the doctor is essentially giving charity, but they could not deduct it for charity. So there is a problem getting health care providers. Part of it is the crack that they have to deal with. The reimbursement, it doesn't even cover their expenses. Um, it keeps getting cut. Um, and there's so much red tape. I mean, I would never tell anyone to go into the healthcare profession. And I was in the healthcare profession. I appreciate that. I, I'm not going to argue that there's an issue in our healthcare system throughout the country. Um, yeah. We all know what our premiums are doing. We all know what our our deductible is to keep our premiums lower. Every one of us expands our deductible out, and it's it, it's a problem. It's a problem. What else do we have? Yes, Mike. I have my Veterans Choice card here. First of all, I have a, a Veterans ID card. Then I have Veterans Choice card temporary program. I read something here. This card does not provide pre-approval. Veterans. The veteran is liable for the cost of care that is not pre-approved. But getting approval is really quite easy. You call this phone number, maybe you have to call it a couple times, but this veteran's choice, you see a lot of people who don't know what they're talking about, slamming a program. But it, for me, I'm one person, it works, and it took a while to get going, but this is what the card looks like. And uh, it's... Well, I'm glad that you're having great luck. Great success with it. I will tell you, I have more complaints than I have positive. Yeah. And, and so we, we know that there's some issues there. Yes. Um, would you support repeal of the uh, pension tax? No. Uh, do you think uh, pensions should be taxed like a 401k? Well, right now they're being taxed. And we settled that. And I believe where it's at right now is fine. And that's where it's got to stay. You had a question? Um, yeah, you had mentioned um, that several bills were passed regarding the opioid crisis. Yes. Um, were any of those, did you include any funding for treatment? Yes, there was treatment in those. There was also um, pain. Um, some of the pain, pain clinic issues were covered in that to make sure that there's other methods that don't continue to Use some Do you have of the a, a yep. dollar amount on the treatment. The no, I, I I can't tell you that, okay. and I I can't remember the bill numbers off the top of my head. But if you'd like them, if you give me your information, I can get those to you. Okay. But if you look on your opiates, if you go to the bill process that mm -hmm. passed, you'll see all of them. That, and I believe okay. there was eleven. Oh. What else can I answer? We're quiet. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Frequent stops make fewer questions. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I guess some of us would be concerned about last night's news about Pipeline 5. I know it's a continuing issue that people who show up and tend to have disagreement about. But, um, you know, the governor said he's greatly concerned about it, and the DEQ director called it completely unacceptable. Um, do you have any? Where, I don't know where you got that from. So you said last night? Yeah, it was on the news last night. Okay, that I haven't seen it. recently <clears throat> have just found yeah. um, some coatings that are missing on sections of the pipe. But they can fix that, and they're going to. <laughs> I, well, they have such a good track Here's the right deal. I, we, we we've discussed again, line no. five, and yeah. you know where my stance is and what I've right. always said. It's got to be inspected and it's got to be at the utmost of safety. We also are knowing that we're working on, a, you know, making sure if it needs to be replaced, we're looking at an alternative to having it replaced. Oh, you are? Yes, that's been oh. being looked at for a period of time. Now, with that, economically, as I stated many times yeah. before, you know, the state of Michigan's on an island. And if we cut the supply off of propane and, and gas and everything else. The cost of goods for us to live here gets extreme. And understand, I will tell you, my bigger concern than Line 5 is Asian carp. Well, I, Asian carp, great. We agree with you on that. But I guess but, we just have a different 
fact um, base that we work from. I, I, I the worry. The risk to us is right. much yeah. more heightened than it is to you. Well, it's you know what? It's outlived its lifespan. Here, and, um, here's the deal. I understand what you're saying there. It's My right. concern is, is that we don't look to the person here we're just discussing things that are going to cost money to, to fix what are we going to do about the person that's on a fixed income that their propane bill goes up 50 percent most of it goes to canada that's so, not well, true i don't know where you get that different, that's not true anyways line you know, five you get, folks it's unfortunate I, to get it from, I, uh, it, we're monitoring on a regular basis if there's a flaw it needs to get fixed and it needs to be taken care of to decommission that would throw the economic base of the state of Michigan in turmoil like you'd never believe. Then start planning now so that won't happen, I guess. Would you know, be the how would you say that it's <laughs> such a key thing to our economy in yeah. Michigan when most of the energy that passes through the pipeline goes right back to Canada? What, when you started. say most of the energy, what it, Oil and a gas, it, okay. it's whatever's pumped through the pipeline goes from across that's, the back that's not, Canada. That is not true. Do you know how many, do you know how many gallons of oil? Gasoline we pull off that on a daily basis that we make at a refinery down by Ann Arbor. How many? We have, it's Don't a million know. over a million gallons a day that we'd have to buy somewhere else. There's other things as umpteen businesses. And, and, and my question problem. is, if it leaks, what's that going to do to the to the economy of the? <laughs> Of the lower peninsula, the upper peninsula. I mean, in Lake Huron and Lake Michigan, it'd be billions of dollars. And, and I didn't. And the economy. I don't disagree with you on that in the lines of taking. But we can't just chop ourselves off sure. and put us on an island. I'm very concerned with that thought process. Aren't there They're other expensive. pipelines that come in from the south? Pardon? Aren't there other pulp pipelines? That there is. They carry the different oil. They carry a different oil. Yes. So you're basically saying that this company can't pipe, you know, the company pumping through line five may be shut off. So it's the company's interest. It's not necessarily in the general aspect of oil. We can get oil from other places. To, to say, excuse me, Kurt, let me go right ahead. A couple of things. You know, Enbridge had a very bad incident down in Missouri. I was there. Everybody, everybody <laughs> understands that. To say they're a bad company because they had an incident is not fair to the company. I can I worked in I the industry. What I would tell you is that BP, the British, let, let me finish. British Petroleum had a culture issue. They had several accidents throughout refinery, oh. offshore, mm -hmm. etc. Many. There was a culture problem. You could say they were a bad company at that time. What they are today, I don't know. But that's not fair to say Enbridge after one event you're because you're mistaking my words if you're talking. No, I'm I'm saying what I've heard in this room, and and then what I would also say is is to snap your fingers and say that we can reroute it is not accurate either. You can do anything; it's a matter of at what cost you want to do it for. And to say there what there is a is point it, of concern, it, it, but it, the it, thing I would also ask myself is is. Since the last election cycle, this has become a wedge issue when 10 years ago, nobody was even aware of it. wasn't even on the radar screen. You know why they became Be aware? Because, because the, of Kalamazoo. The Kalamazoo River That's right. got One completely is, polluted. That's right. It's One polluted is, for it's all our life. The, the stuff that's in, going through that pipeline is a different stuff. It's, it's not as um, uh, corrosive <coughs> and, and heavy it's a light and crew. stuff. And, that is it healthy for it's the being, environment? It's being inspected, and they are catching things in their inspection and fi fixing them as they go along. My, so my, they are yeah, continuing this is to a, This it. is a pipeline that was engineered for a 50-year lifespan, and it's 63 years old. Now, if I had a, if I have, you know, if I buy any other piece of equipment that's past its time, I'm, I know I'm taking a gamble. Uh, what should we gamble with such a thing like this? We have, it's, we have an opportunity here to to take a preventive measures to prevent something really catastrophic from happening. You do understand that the same company that put in the line and built the line also built the Mackinac Bridge with the same standards, so that we shut the bridge down. We do constant maintenance the on the bridge to make it safe. Lifetime. It's, it was built within the same region of time. And I think what we forget out of this whole process is, 
is that we're inspecting it and just to rip it up and and say that it, we can decommission it, it it's not and you the other problem that we have and nobody ever wants to report on it the pressure on the outside of that pipe is greater than the pressure on the inside of the pipe that's being pushed through so if there is some leakage in there it's very minimal in less than three minutes it's shut off on either end if there's a pressure breach so I think there's a lot of standards that Enbridge has spent a lot of money. I've been through the plant, I've been through the facility, I've seen the pipe, I've held a hunk of the pipe. And I will tell you that they're doing everything they can to make sure that they keep us as safe as we can. And like I said, I'm more concerned if you want to talk about water contamination and a downfall in our economic base is if the Asian carp make it through the river. We'll talk about that in a minute. I, I think we need to put the whole... Uh, pipeline in perspective. This is one pipeline and the reason we even have this discussion is because the petrobillionaires control energy in this Correct. country. They control the government. Um, so we can fight about this particular pipeline. There are so many pipelines across the country uh, to fight over and the only reason we're having this is because it's not put into perspective. Climate change is real. We need to get off these fuels and get onto clean energy. The rest of the world the rest of the world is headed in that direction, and I am just sad for my country right now that we are not leading. We are stuck in these dirty old fuels because of money in politics, and that's the only reason. Uh, so we can go back and forth every time we do with uh, about it, pipeline, and, and but we, we need to look at the we big picture. We're not leading. We're falling behind in this country. Everybody else is in the Paris Agreement, and we are out of it. They're going to forge ahead with the technology. They're going to own energy in the future. And here we are because of money in politics, dirty, bought out money. We're stuck in the past. And that breaks my heart for our well, country. This goes beyond politics. Well, it really I'm, does. Look at that hurricane. Nobody is okay. mentioning. I grew up in hurricane country. I remember having to evacuate. We've always had hurricanes. This is a super storm like they've never seen. That's going to continue. You can deny this climate change all you want. Mother Nature's not going to deny it. We are going to look you, back on this and say, and how did we let this happen on. to Let's our country? One. I understand your feeling, and I, I feel I don't your know passion. You do. Well, <laughs> I hope I, you do. You understand that I live in Mason County, yeah. and I have wind turbines in Mason County. Now, <laughs> you ask me how many wind turbines are in Manistee County. Zero, right? None. We need as a and, nation and, to put them where they're exactly. not disruptive. Not really. Where is that? Where, is that? where is that? And you know the oh, other thing is, I got them in Mason County, and where? Tell me where you would want them in Mason County. Kansas, the farmers have them in their fields, and they're happy to be doing it. Has anybody every else farmer in Mason County loves it, but every neighbor that didn't get one hates it. And we've been in court since day one. Well, as a country, we've lost money. We need to be looking at this. There has to be solar. An to go back. Solar. If, if you were to eliminate oil from the prospect, there has to be a way. I mean, we're doing it completely backwards in my mind. We are using up our fossil fuels, polluting our environment in the process where we have other means to create the energy we need. We should be using those means up and then rely on the fossil fuels way into the future when the sun gives out or the waves quit running or the wind quits blowing. Why don't we work toward that means instead of using the destructive method first? Well, it, it's very interesting you bring that up because I think most of us look at our energy bill and I hear it all the time from my constituents. Why in the world am I paying $4 a month for green energy technology? I think it's hogwash. I hear it every day by a lot of people. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Other countries are doing. Well, they're putting solar panels it's, on. It's proven. And they're doing it. They're doing it. You know, I feel that. I remember when I was a kid, and the U.S. was going to be number one, and we put a man on the moon. I think we can go with And now, we're not willing to be number one. We're not willing to be number one. All right, we're breaking off of what we're going to do, because I can't solve that issue right now. It's a national issue. Well, I think that's what we need to do. 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 I think that's what Lady talked about the hurricane and this one and my brother-in-law who's in the Grand Rapids 
the actual word was sent to her King Harley to work in as a service manager member. And we do need to, to um, remember the people in Texas and the, the people from Great Cross, etc. Because it's a team effort and you guys come to the policy table where everybody has a say. No, I, I knew that they were going to get called up. I have a friend that that's a major in the National Guard and I chatted with him on Tuesday and he said that I talked to him Tuesday evening and he said by 10 o'clock they would be probably notified and he was pretty sure that they were going to be deployed down. So uh, we it's a super storm that, you know what, I've never seen, but we saw, you know, a couple years ago in Mason County a 12 inch rainstorm over a, a 10 hour period. Uh, we see the devastation, but to see you know, 50 inches of rain um, in, in a system just basically sit there for days, which is, you know, just amazing in itself to, you know, we got a feel for the people that live in, in Texas and are experiencing that. Yes? Um, in the Bridge Magazine this morning, they were talking about the uh, loss of population through the northern counties and um, lack of employment. Your good jobs initiative, uh, are we going to see any of that outcomes in northern Michigan? It can go anywhere that it, that a company wants. We've got one in Ludington that potentially is going to take advantage of that. Uh, they're building a brand new facility as we speak right now. Looks like they'll employ anywhere from 140 to 200 jobs. Great. New jobs coming into Mason County. Uh, you know, the, the other aspect of that is, is that we do know in northern Michigan that a lot of these folks that relocate to the state, they come north and they're going to visit. So we will get some backside. There's a lot of opportunity with that. I feel very strongly that it was a good piece of legislation for the right reasons with the right standards and checkpoints on it to make sure that it's done right and make sure that people follow through. It's not any hire 200 and after a month let 50 of them go. If you don't hold your guaranteed number and if you miss it by one, you get zero. You gotta be at 100% the average wage. You get a kickback of your 125%. You'll actually, so there's a lot of benefits to what I feel strong for our counties up north. I will tell you, working very hard with the DT Energy because we've got a sector of every one of my counties that's on the east side of the highway that we're limiting our potential growth because we don't have the infrastructure and we don't have natural gas and it's got to get there. I mean, we have the largest employer in Benzie County, which is Crystal Mountain. They have propane. That's how they run it. But, you know, think of Thompsonville, Cope, Mishkalava, Brethren. If we had these opportunities there, what kind of growth we have, and we have the potential to have people there. So we, we, the infrastructure is imperative that we work to get that done. And you know, I'm working hard to make sure that we can start addressing that for our eastern sides of our counties all the way up. Yes, Mike. Some of you are old enough to remember global cooling. Back when I was a kid, we had global cooling. Now we have global warming. I'm in favor of global warming because I'm tired of Michigan winters. I told you this before. I'm not. I'm going to, I'm, well, they're too cold. I like snow. And I'm going to drive my big V8 all I can to promote global warming. And if 50 million other people do the yeah, same thing, we're, we're going to increase maybe one degree for one day, which that's all hobby copy. Yes, sir. You mentioned a big entity like Crystal Mountain and their <coughs> need for natural gas. Do they have the capacity to develop, say, wind energy or solar in a, a cost-effective method to advance their operations as opposed 
to bringing in a natural gas? Well, let, I'm going to give you an example. I toured the um, pump storage plant in Mason County along with Lake Winds Energy Park, and we know that we have 56 turbines, correct? At capacity, the 56 turbines can just produce enough energy to fire our Meyer store. That's all that that produces. You're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. That's from the words of the people that run the park. It's a, I forget how many <clears throat> megawatts it is. I can't pull it off the top. But you know, we, we, here's, here's a perfect example. We have pump storage. I don't know how many of you are aware of pump storage. I feel it's a green energy plant. It's not deemed green energy because it uses some electricity that's not in the grid to pump it back up in the night, even though it's there. But when I was there, they were pumping out 770 kilowatt, which is a lot of energy. And we were there when they pumped it, it turned on the next two turbines, and that went from 770 to 1,395 in less than five minutes. And all it is is water running through a turbine, and in the time when there's no consumption, they take that energy that they didn't use and push it back up into the light. These are the things, but there will never be another one built in the United States. Because of what it is. And you want to talk about efficient and lines of clean energy and the lines of no emissions, but there will be another, never be another one built in the United States. You know a lot more about this stuff than I do. Do you believe that there are no technologies better than oil and gas? Do I believe that right now? Yeah. I, I, would, I don't know if there is anything. I'm not aware of it, at least for sure not economically. There are some, and I don't have the specifics, but um, my husband cited one, and I can't think of what it's called. He's an engineer, and um, there are efficient ways, so maybe I should try and get a hold of that. And bring I mean, I'm just thinking high fuel out. cells for cars. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that, that thing. I mean, there's really nothing, not a lot, that would not justify going that means if we really wanted to eliminate putting gasoline in our vehicles. You know, I'm concerned about <clears throat> the long haul. You know, the, it's what, the way it is, we're being surpassed by other countries around the world. Uh, China is already the dominant solar energy or, or renewable energy producer in the world, while we're sitting here clinging to our fossil fuels. Uh, other countries, the Netherlands, for example, the smallest, tiny little postage stamp country in Europe, produces, is the second largest exporter of agricultural products by dollar value behind the United States. Tiny little country, because they've embraced modern technology and have been able to, uh, I think, quadruple their food production. So we need to be thinking about innovation, not just clinging to the same old technology that we've been using for the last 150 years. Because the future, if we do, will be left behind economically and everything else. And that's our part. And we're already in that process right now. And if, if uh, you know, the, the leaders, the legislators and so forth continue to deny the facts of science and technology, then we're, we're, we're going to be eclipsed by other countries, other parts of the world. Yes, ma'am. Um, going through Spain, uh, 10 years ago, I remember seeing the solar panels out in the crowd country, and of course, that's a you know, sunny country. And I'm thinking about how many businesses and hospitals and schools were approached by cell phone companies to put towers up and such on their buildings. My goodness, we had the uh, opportunity, I think, in Michigan to put solar panels on a lot of things oh, that sure. are already, you know, there and just tack them up on top, perhaps. Um, look, we've got, we've got some energy producers up here in uh, Kokmish. Um, yep, I've met with them. Yeah, so it seems like we've got, we don't always have the bright, bright, bright sunny days, but uh, it seems like even in the winter, we have a couple solar panels at our house. Even on a day in winter, we get some, we get some hot water from those things. So, it seems like we've got some opportunities here, which would provide for a job creation as well as cleaner energy. 
And, you could and that's the next push is the solar farms. They're going to call them solar farms. They're, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're being, but we're finding that we're meeting resistance on solar farms no. also. But do you support I mean, solar farms? Of do you support solar farms? If we can do it, I, I support everything if it can be done economically and if we're not subsidizing the tar out of it. Yeah. I think that it, I think that it needs to, it, when it develops and it gets there, but if we continue just to dump millions and billions of dollars into something that doesn't have a standard of reproducing or giving us back any real return, um, you know, let me, let me pull, I want to read something here real quick if I can find my picture from my, and, and this will probably cause some people to get a little nervous with me, but just bear with me a minute. Just so you know, we we toured um, pump storage back on August 9th, okay? And this is, let me get to my border here. This is actual true cost for energy, okay? The gas combined plant, such as pump storage, costs $1,000 a kilowatt. New coal, $3,000 a kilowatt. Natural gas upgrade, $1,000 a kilowatt. New wind energy, $2,302 a kilowatt. New solar, $2,333 per kilowatt. Now, also the plant in Ludington is going through a major upgrade. I'm not sure if any of you know this, but they're putting new turbines in the system. And they went from a seven fin to a nine fin turbine. Makes it more efficient. By changing that, it brings the existing cost or megawatt cost is $29.97. By this upgrade, it brings the new cost down to $27.25 per megawatt. So they, they're working on those things. It's an amazing process to get that turbine from China where it's being built mm -hmm. to the United States. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It, it's here, and it, it, they can't build it here. They're not, we don't have the technology to build that. Right. That turbine. That's on exactly my point. But you know, we're, any, any, we're being eclipsed by yeah. other countries. Yep. Any new technology comes down over time as it's more used. I mean, I look at what I paid for a computer ages ago that did sure. nothing, and what you pay now. So and it gets more efficient. It gets more efficient. It improves the more. But you I, use I'm just it. I'm bringing a point when you're 50, basically 65 percent higher in cost, it gets hard to eclipse that number, especially now, this is current cost was 1,000. When they do that upgrade, we just saw it's going to drop it by 20%. Now all of a sudden we're down to 800. We need to it, be more I'll, visionary than a snapshot of this. And I, and the hurricane is going to cost billions. Absolutely. And we're going to see more of those events, and we're all going to be paying for that one way or another. Absolutely. So we need to transition absolutely. to absolutely. the cleaner fuels <laughs> so that we can at least try to mitigate some of that intensity that we're getting because of global warming. Absolutely. Water. We're a global economy that's affected by everything else. I will tell you, I made phone calls already on Tuesday to see what it was going to do to our economic base in lines of lending possibilities, what it's going to do to cost us in raw banking material, and how we're going to cover that. Because I will tell you, we know that it's going to, you talk about billions of dollars. How many people lost their homes that were underwater on their mortgage are going to walk? That goes into the market. And what's that potentially, what could that do to the economics of the United States? Dramatic. And so that, these are all things, our energy right? The, well, yeah. it does. This is, these are the things that I'm trying to discuss, and I'm trying. We're, we're jumping back. I mean, these are a lot. Of, this is what I deal with 
and it's not like I don't make these phone calls and I don't learn. Good. Good. I, you know, so I just I just want to say I understand what you're trying to get at, and costs will drive down when technology gets better. But where, how much can we continue to say out of my pocket, and everybody that says you're taxing me enough to to develop technology? that right now is going to be hard to ever eclipse what happens at pump storage cost-wise. But th the point is, the more we stick with these fossil fuels, the more of these terrible hurricanes... But that's not a fossil fuel. It's, still money. it's not a fossil fuel at pump storage, but we will never get another one built. The EPA and the general public will never allow <coughs> anything like that to ever be built again. That's one thing. There's other forms of... Well, I'm, just, I'm giving you an example because I don't... Right. I want you to understand the fight that we've had in Mason County that continues today. Okay, so These are the look things. at alternative greens, like solar. Yeah. All right, one more question, then we're going to call her a day. Do I have another meeting at West Shore? Uh, right you here. mentioned that they did not gain, uh, well, I'm assuming you're saying, they did not gain in Mason County the kind of uh, energy that they assumed they would from those no, they, they they got exactly what they figured oh, they, they were going to get out of it. So, that's all they can. That's all that's, the capacity you can make. So, they knew what it is, but it was mandated that they had to hit X percent by the government. Yeah. So they had to do it no matter what. Great Lakes. No, the the Great Lakes Energy, okay. which is owned is a shared DTE and Consumers okay. Energy, was mandated by state law and federal law that we have to hit a certain percentage of green energy. Oh, okay. okay. And so it had to so be built. It, it did what it's... It, what? It's exactly what they... Okay. The day that we were there was a day similar to today, hardly any wind. Mm -hmm. It was it was producing 0 0.03 kilowatts the day we were there. Okay. He says, mm -hmm. at max, we could take care of a mire. Today, we aren't even putting anything on the grid. Mm -hmm. It's basically, okay. so these are, this is what it is. So anyways, it's five after. I've got another appointment with uh, well, thank you. West Shore Community College. I appreciate everybody for coming out today. And we'll see you somewhere in Manistee next month. Okay. Bye.